a lot of people say, well, we got to change politicians. I say, no, no. The politicians are not to blame for these problems that we have. That we can blame them a little bit. We can blame them for not being statesmen. We can blame them for being hustlers. We can blame them for being liars. But ladies and gentlemen, the bulk of the blame lies with you and I, because politicians are doing precisely what you and I elect them to office to do. And what do we elect them to office to do? We elect them to office to use the power of their office to take what belongs to one American and give it to us. And, or to give one American a privilege that will be denied another American. I mean, you see this, you say, well, not we people in California. Well, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I <thought you> <laughs> Imagine I'm running for the United States Senate in California. Now, I go up and down the state and I tell the people of California, look, I have read the United States Constitution, namely Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution, and if you send me to Washington, don't expect for me to bring back Meals on Wheels, aid to higher education, highway construction funds, because it's not in the Constitution of the United States. Do you think I would get elected to the Senate? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Now, here's the tragedy of it, ladies and gentlemen, that from a narrow economic self-interest point of view, Californians would be exactly right not sending me to the United States Senate. Why? Because if I don't bring back billions of dollars worth of goodies, it doesn't mean that Californians will pay a lower federal income tax. <laughs> All it means is that Nevada will get it instead. That is, when legalized theft begins, it pays for everybody to get involved. And those who, who don't get involved wind up holding the brown end of the stick. <laughs> so th that, is, that is the tragedy. It's, it's making sense for all of us to get involved with uh, using government to take somebody else's money. It's, it's a tragedy in happening in our country. Now, you'll, you'll get a lot of people say, you'll, some of your politicians out here will say, well, um, uh, Williams, all these things are justified in the Constitution under the General Welfare Clause. Uh, uh, it, th that, is, that is utter nonsense. And if you, and if you read the words of people like, like Madison, you know, Madison, uh, James, uh, James Madison, uh, he objected to a uh, money going to some French refugees, I believe in, in uh, 1789, 1792, something like that. And he said, Matt, I'm virtually uh, quoting him, he says, I cannot lay my finger on the article in the Constitution that warrants Congress taking the money of their constituents for the purposes of benevolence. And James Madison is the father of the Constitution. So he should know. And, and with regard to the word general welfare, he says that, as a matter of fact, I think I quoted in, in, the, uh, in the forward to the book, in, in, the, uh, in the preface or the introduction. Uh, he says that if we, if we apply the word general welfare to everything, it'll turn the Constitution into something that was not uh, contemplated by its designers.